Oh, I'll take one. Oh, <laughs> got all of them. No, no, no. Thank you. Awesome. I got like six. Thank, no, thank you. you. No, you guys want I wouldn't have even have known what that is. Mm. Seven dollars of an assessment. Thank you very much. Seven point two now. If we did, if we use all of them, we, you want to wait? Do you need well, to? No, I don't know what time it is. It's two twenty. Oh, yeah. So we should get started. Okay. Okay. Um, there's hello. <laughs> I'm Anne Garnsey Harder from Shoreline Community College. And I'm Jordan Lee, Shoreline Community College. And we've put some business cards in the back and a couple other um, cards that we're going to refer to as we talk today. Um, so feel free to get those if you haven't already. So um, what we're talking about today is um, digital opportunity gaps. Sorry, I'm going to start my timer just to make sure I can make sure that we don't go over. Okay. Um, so we're exploring Smarter Measure, which is a, a tool um, that our institution purchases. And um, it's helped us identify digital opportunity gaps for our students and then um, have develop resources to um, lower those opportunity gaps. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. By the end of the session, we're hoping that you can identify digital opportunity gaps at your institution. We'll tell you about at ours, um, understand more about what Smarter Measure is, and then develop some initial thoughts on how you might incorporate Smarter Measure or something similar, a similar assessment tool into your classroom or your daily work. So how many here are teachers like teaching in a classroom? Okay, good, a couple of you. And so it's like half and half. It, what? It, in a classroom. In a online classroom? Yes. Okay. So physical or online. All right. Um, sounds good. And then I heard so you, you run an online program. Okay. Oh, great. That's awesome. Okay. And how about you two? Oh, okay. Great. Great. All right. Um, oh, and so one of the things that so our institution is heavy on accessibility, and um, so one of the things that best practices, I guess, when you're presenting um, for accessibility is to have um, numbers on your your slides. We don't, ha we didn't print this out for you, but if we did, so everyone would know wh where we're at, and, and so we're on slide number two, and to actually read out the text um, in case someone couldn't see it, or um, yeah. So j so we're going to try that. Um, all right, so this is our college. It's beautiful there right now in the fall. It's actually beautiful all year round, but especially the leaves are changing. Um, so we have about 10,000 students. Um, that's unduplicated headcount, uh, students who walk through our doors um, virtually and physically each year. Um, we're a quarter-based institution, so about 6,000 um, students are enrolled in any given quarter. Uh, 23 years is the median age, more women than men, um, about 50-50 full-time, um, part-time. We have a large international student presence on our campus with, uh, it's, I think about, it's gone down in the last few years, but I think it was maybe um, close to 20% of our student body um, from 50 different countries. Um, we have a new residence hall that just opened a couple of weeks ago, which is really great for us. Um, and about, s I think 50% of those students are international yes, and about 50% are domestic um, students. We have Canvas as our learning management system. And we also, in addition to international, we have a really large, um, comparatively to our sister colleges, um, fully online student um, cohort of students. So about 16% of our student body is fully online. All right. And so uh, before, so we want to share a basic definition of the opportunity gap. Uh, we understand that it's something that can be talked about at length and that it's a session in and of itself. Uh, for today, we just want to share a basic definition of it. Uh, so slide four, um, our definition is from edglossary.org and it states, uh, refers to the ways in which race, ethnicity, socioeconomic status, 
English proficiency, community wealth, familial situations, or other factors contribute to or perpetuate lower educational aspirations, achievement, and attainment for certain groups of students. And so typically those certain groups of students might be uh, low income, non-English speaking, first generation, or they might even come from economically disadvantaged areas or communities. And so why we prefer the term opportunity gap is because the achievement gap, um, which a lot of us are familiar with, that focuses more on the disparities of academic outcomes in those certain groups of students. And so typically those academic outcomes are retention rates, but the most mainstream way of test scores. And so both of those are very result oriented and it puts a lot of responsibility on the student. So the opportunity gap is more solution oriented and it helps us figure out what a student actually has to go through before stepping foot on a college campus before they take those tests. And the best way to think about it is that the opportunity gaps drive the achievement gap and our goal is to find resources for students and make those accessible so that they're in the future they're successful. So these are the digital opportunity gaps at Shoreline. Um, our e-learning services team, we work with the general student population, but we also, well, we mainly support those taking fully online private courses. So these are some of the gaps that impact the student success. Um, the ones that are bolded are ones that I commonly see, so my primary job is working with students in the private. And the very first two are very common in quarter to quarter, so a lot of students I work with have no internet at home because they can't afford it. And so therefore they have minimal access to internet because they might be using uh, the library that closes at 7 p.m. or they might be sharing internet with a friend or family member. Um, regardless, it's problematic because they do not have access to online content or personal. Another gap is some students, and this is quite common at other campuses too, but some students only own a mobile device. And I do understand there are outliers out there and there are courses that are mobile friendly. But for the students I work with, it becomes problematic because taking a test, homework, you know, interacting with online content just through a mobile device, it's difficult, especially for students taking three full online classes. And then the very bottom one, uh, low comfort level of technology, this is the number one thing that comes up in conversation. And so whether a student is graduating high school or they're a returning student, um, everyone comes in with a different level of experience with technology. So luckily Shoreline has uh, systems and resources in place to help students get comfortable with technology, and especially the technology that Shoreline offers. Um, again, our goal is to position students for success. Do you, so do any of these look familiar at your institutions? Yeah. Is there anything not on the list? Because maybe you guys work with a special population or maybe specific department at all? Yeah, I think even for me, like three years ago, even being an older millennial, I didn't think people were using their cell phones at all for taking a course, but it's really common. It's more than I thought. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. yeah. I think the gap is on, on our side of the institution. I'm not sure that we know, or I don't know as a designer or a faculty, what percentage of our students don't, are using a smartphone. And I, I design courses online. I think we should know that, but I don't think we do. Mm -hmm. At least I've never heard of it. We've we done. Design with that blindly. We've done technology surveys of students um, and asked them that question. We haven't done it in, I'd say, three years or so. Um, but anecdotally, we do have students who say they they only use their phone or they only have a phone to take their online fully online classes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So my university, We're going to go into some of that stuff. Yeah, All right. 
So talking about um, digital opportunity gap, um, gaps that impact education. Um, so it might be hard to even apply or register for college. Um, you probably have to do that online. Um, or it's, yeah, that's how most people do it. Um, it might be challenging to take an online or, or a technology rich course, like writing a research paper, you know, a long paper um, using Microsoft Word or taking computer based tests, reading electronic text um, online or online articles, checking grades, all of that stuff is, is online, communicating with instructors. So that can increase stress and uh, reduce student, you know, um, uh, student time to learn and student success. And so we're going to talk a little bit more about that and what, what we do to affect that. Okay, so um, uh, also on the effects on the workforce, um, finding job opportunities might be a, a gap too. Like, I mean, how, where would you go to find a job? <laughs> probably online, right? And you probably know some online resources um, to help you find jobs. Um, filling out online applications, completing interview activities. Uh, we were just talking at my college where I'm hiring for a couple of, of um, positions right now and we were talking about having people do a writing sample. Like that's a kind of a standard thing that we've been doing at Shoreline for several years and we're talking about it now from an equity perspective. Um, and and maybe rethinking that. Um, so anyway, um, performing technical tasks on the job, online job training. Um, this is a picture of, of one of our professional technical programs, um, advanced manufacturing. <laughs> at, we just had an open house the other day. And so, um, you know, digital um, machines and skills are part of, of life, you know, so much that, um, if you don't have those skills, it's a big gap. Okay, so Smarter Measure. So I'm, we're gonna talk a little bit about how Smarter Measure helps, and then we're gonna show you what it is and um, how we've utilized it to help. So it's helped um, identify strategy, it helps identify strategies for a student to succeed, given their individual circumstances, and we're gonna show you how it helps students understand what their circumstances are. Um, it helps us, like e-learning services, connect students to resources that students might not know exist. We're going to show you how we do that. And then it also informs us of resources that students need to help them succeed. So we've beefed up a lot of the resources that we provide based on students taking Smarter Measure. Um, so it's been really good for us in terms of growing our program. And then it's, it's a good tool for faculty to become better informed about their student unique needs. And we're going to show you some quotes from faculty who have used it. OK, so what is it? All right, so Smarter Measure, slide nine. Um, Smarter Measure is an online survey that helps students find out if they're ready to take an online high or technology course. On average, we found out just to faculty and students, it takes about 30 to 45 minutes. So it's pretty, pretty lengthy. Um, and it could be longer if the student is using proficient with computers. And it is open to all. So open to all meaning it's for prospective students, current students, faculty, and staff. So anyone with the survey is able to take some money. Um, and I think the college does a really good job promoting it. So prospective students, they'll find out about it through marketing and recruiting events. We also post the survey link on our e-learning services webpage. Uh, for new and current students, they'll find out about it through using orientation, academic workshops, advisors, a success coach, and then Faculty also have Smarter Measure in their course. Uh, some faculty, not all, has a week zero assignment, but we're just assigning for no points just to connect students um, with our services. And in terms of, I guess I go into cost a little bit. I think if for every time someone takes the survey, it's about seven dollars and thirty cents. So no cost to the user, but we will pay for the um, the survey. So all right, probably a little bit more. Money. Our institution pays the cost. Um, no one's, is anyone from Smarter Measure? <laughs> they told me that's proprietary information, but, um, but uh, yeah, so we pay, I think it's um, about $8,000 a year, and we get a certain number. Um, and that has increased as it's become more popular. The, the, the amount that we buy is, has increased as it becomes more popular at the institution. But, so this goes into the new student orientation yes. packet, and so this is one of the ways that students find out about Smarter Measure. This um, and these cards can be found all over campus too. So. 
And so Smarter Measure itself has six uh, components to it, and those six components are four. So individual attributes, like factors, technical competency, technical knowledge, on-screen, reading rate, and recall, and type speed and accuracy. So the bullet points you see underneath those components, those are um, some examples of what the question might be based around. Um, so every component will have a question and or activity attached to it. And so once a student finishes one component, they'll either be scored low readiness, immediate readiness, or high readiness. Um, and I'd say the number one, so I go through all of them, but the number one attribute uh, component where a student will score low or medium in is individual attributes. And that's specifically with time management. Uh, we are a quarter system, so every class is by credit, which means that that requires 15 to 20 hours of the day. So when a student decides to be full time, 15 credit, that's 45 to 60 hours, not including a you know, full time job they might have, part time job, extracurricular activities, or maybe even having a sporting event. Um, so that's always a point of conversation when I speak to students um, when they have a chance to. But the main takeaway from this slide is that if a student, for example, scores low or medium readiness in three out of the six categories, our job isn't to discourage a student from taking an online course, but we want to reach out to them to help them and give them the resources they need to the um, I think a lot of times students they think they want to be a full-time student, but not really making the connection of those other priorities outside of college. But again, um, our goal is to help students and not discourage them from being in the So what comes after, this is the follow-up piece, so there's three points of outreach. Um, one is through smarter measures. So the moment they finish their survey, they'll get a custom confirmation email, and the results are attached, and the results are about 15 pages. We have some samples. I have some here. samples, of, yeah. And then also in the email, there's a link to an open Canvas course called Ready for Online Learning. So if a student wants to interpret their scores right away and find out what campus resources we offer, they can go inside this online course right away. And the other reason we have it is... Yeah. Sorry, is that online course open to It's open to anybody actually. Yeah, right now. It's so not it's open until so we are for anybody anyway. Correct, yeah, it's open for people to view it but not for the content. So. Um, and so the reason why we have that is that because I might not be able to reach out to a student right away. So they are able to get the resources they need immediately. And the second point of outreach is oh, so for me, it's a to have the name all that information. Mm -hmm. uh, is that information just going to the student or is that available to the institution? It's available to the student and then I'll get it some part of that. Not to the institution. You could, you could design it however you wanted, though. Yeah. Um, you just basically put email addresses in Smarter Measure in the software, and it, it'll spit out the results wherever you want it to go. Okay. Yeah. And those are, um, I presented on um, the data around Smarter Measure a couple of years ago, and <laughs> I think all of those are copies of when I took Smarter Measure, so that's a couple of years old. Um, and we're going to present some updated data. I think, what does that say, 2015, maybe on it? So, <laughs> so Smarter Measure has updated since then, but, okay, go ahead. Or you uh, okay, so if a student has completed, I'll reach out to them, and I'll just recommend they make an appointment with me if they want to interpret their scores. Uh, for those who did not complete Smarter Measure, then these might be prospective students. Um, I'll still email them, just because I think they're still interested in Shoreline, so if I can reach out, it's just another way to get that prospective student population interested in short time, whether they finish it or not. So it's definitely a tool for that. And then some students might hear from their faculty, because faculty might put Smarter Measure in the course as a week zero assignment or just a recommended resource for zero points. But either way, we will reach out to the student once they finish Smarter Measure. And uh, I guess you have it in front of you, but I took a snippet anyway. Um, so on the left-hand side here, the one red represents low readiness, uh, two yellow, three green represents medium readiness, and then the four green represents high readiness. And so at the top, this individual student has uh, three, which is medium readiness, and Smarter Measure, Smarter Measure is suggesting that they might have issues with time management. Um, but below the results, there's always resources for support that align with that component as well. And this part is customizable, so our e-learning services team is can pick articles and videos and resources so that students can uh, and the right um, but again, there's always resources for support that are aligned with 
And I added in some quotes from students okay. um, mm -hmm. about time management. So um, one student says, the skill I most, and, and so this is them reflecting on their results, right? So um, skill I'm most concerned about for myself is time management. I'm also, work, I'm also working full time right now. So balancing work with school and the rest of life can be quite a juggling act, which is what you said. Um, this is the biggest area where folks get lower scores. Um, I think I could greatly improve my approach in budgeting time. I'm organized, but I have a very busy life and really need to stay on top of things to make it work. I need to create a solid calendar for scheduling, work, study, and grandchildren and stick to it. And so that's the kind of thing that we um, want um, students to do is take Smarter Measure, reflect on it, and make a plan to, um, so that they can be successful. Um, faculty who integrate Smarter Measure into their classes will often do it like at the beginning of the quarter or, or week zero and ask students to write a short reflection like that might include quotes like this. Um, so e-learning resources. Um, so these are six resources that align with the six components of Smarter Measure. So you want to be very intentional. Um, some of these we've had for a little while. Some are still new and hoping to scale. And then I think some of them we haven't created yet because I don't think there's but I'll go through each of them just to show you the function of our resources. So Ready for Online Learning, that's the open campus course that I mentioned that was attached to the compilation as well. It's a public course, so students can interpret their scores right away. But we also put this lead on our um, e-learning services page as well. And the reason why we do that is that some students might not, they might not want to take smart measure, but they want to learn how to be a successful online learner. So they're able to get in here and get the benefits and learn how to get uh, connected and and they also might not finish Smarter Measure. And they may never finish Smarter Measure. Like a lot of students don't finish taking the whole assessment. Yeah, I will put a plug in. I think using the uh, essay, the reading, the recall piece, it gets a little bit time consuming. It's a little bit of a task. So there's a lot of people that don't finish it. You know, you score your charts, you can take it. Yeah, so if any of you go to our site and take it, which you could, because <laughs> it's open, uh, it, you'll, it'll charge us $7. Yep. <clears throat> In, on the terms of the time management. Time management. Yeah, so the second part, so the on-screen re uh, reading rate and recall, and yeah. and scheme equity, those are actually exercises. So the on-screen reading rate and recall, that's your traditional essay, and then you can answer questions based off of the essay. So that's where students stop, because when well, they see this long essay, it's basically like a test, so then they kind of shut down. Uh, and then the typing speed and accuracy, that's the traditional words per minute. So Smarter Measure wants to see how accurate the student is, and then the student can do what they prepare. But because it's so hands-on, yeah, but yeah, I don't know if we can. Yeah, it actually is in the back of our test right now. So they'll go through the first half answering questions. So, yeah. <laughs> or maybe we should make it the first. <laughs> <laughs> then we'll have the second half answering questions. Right. Yeah. So that's the second part. So we'll talk about time management. Um, and then we'll talk about the second part, which is the online learning tools. So we're going to talk about the online learning tools. And then we'll talk about the online learning tools. And then we'll talk about the online learning tools. And then we'll talk about the online learning tools. And then we'll talk about and a student can check it out for an entire quarter if they are at least 50 miles away from campus and they are registered for at least one online -on course. So if they're eligible, they can come pick up the laptop at our apartment or we can mail it to them if they can't make it to campus. Um, right now we have about 35 laptops and it's a combination of MacBooks, Dell laptops, and Chromebooks. Um, I think we actually have, can I say 40, we have 41, but there's a couple that haven't been returned. They have not been returned. We're going to get them back. So we um, uh, do have some that are floating. There's about six that are floating right now. But this is one of the resources that we developed post um, starting with Smarter Measure because um, we identified this as a student need. And so whenever there's monies available in the e-learning budget, I buy laptops because they, they get checked out. Um, we've experimented with like how long to check them out and who to check them out to. Originally, we said any e-learning student, so it could be anyone online or hybrid. Um, and there were long lines of people at the. We ch check them out through the library, 
um, and there were long lines, and it was stressful for the library staff because um, you you know on the first day of the quarter, there were, <laughs> so they asked us to make it more restrictive. So now you have to take at least one online class, and that seems to there still is a, a big demand, but there's not fist fights <laughs> in the library. So. So do you send that out so you can post it and send it out? Yeah, yes we do. Yeah. Can they recheck it out and send it back to you at the end of the quarter? I think they have to send it back, I think. I, I don't know, we haven't had, um, I would say we've had a small handful of people who we've actually sent them out to. Um, and I don't know if we've had a request to and keep it. Send it back and send it back. And send it back. Right, back which wouldn't, wouldn't make sense. But um, yeah, I don't think we've, we've <laughs> Um, covered or gone over that bridge yet? Okay. Yeah. And our associate student government also is kind of the library, so they also have laptops as well. So you can rent those out uh, for a laptop and so Just another one. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we also have online tutoring through the Western e Tutoring Consortium. So students can upload their research paper to the writing lab. They can get a live tutor, or they can just email um, the tutor. If they decide to use the writing lab or email system, it does take about 48 hours. Um, but this is available to all students, not just one baby online and hybrid courses. And we also have a business and e-learning, uh, business technology and e-learning center inside our library. And this gives a chance for students to drop in. And so, for example, this fall, Tuesdays and Thursdays between 12.30 and 3.30 p.m., students can get help with basic and community. Um, this is helpful for our team as well because we might be busy during certain parts of the year. And some of the questions that come in, they can't be answered right away. It might take 20 minutes and it's a very hands-on session. Uh, so, um, but yeah, great resource. And originally it was just a business technology center because we have a business technology program and those classes help students um, learn how to use Microsoft application products. So we partnered with them and made the learning center so that students can also get many of those courses were pulled And again, this is a resource that we developed after we started using Smarter Measure. Introduction to online learning. Um, so our instructional designer, Amy, teaches students how to use Canvas. Um, and the best part is students can actually practice using Canvas because these sessions are held inside the computer lab. And so students who need on-demand help, Amy will come around and help those students and they get the help that they need while they're on and typically, these sessions are aligned with new student orientation. So we'll have um, two sessions the week of orientation, and maybe two sessions right afterwards, which is typically the first week of the class. And that's been really great in terms of Absolutely. how many it's how many students, yeah, yeah, how many students we. Broadcast through Zoom at the same time we no, not yet, because it's still such a hands-on. Um, it does session. look like it has Zoom, it's Zoom there. Zoom. Yeah, we yeah, didn't yeah. use Zoom. I'm trying to. I don't know. Truth be told, I think that's a screenshot from something else. Okay. Oh yeah, this is from our faculty institute. We and then finally we have LinkedIn Learning. So LinkedIn uh, purchased Google.com. So now they have over fourteen thousand tutorials and online courses. And so what's great about this is that students don't have to use YouTube to find out how to use a certain function in Excel, but they have high quality tutorials and online courses fully on Excel. And the best part is that online courses, you get a certificate at the end, add that to your LinkedIn profile. So this is available to all uh, students who are doing courses that show up. So excellent resource. And, and then, then you guys subscribe to that. Correct. Yeah, we, we pay for Not it. Not a representative for them, but it is a great product. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone at our institution, employees and students, have access to it. And people use it, actually. So. And the last part I want to say is all these resources I've mentioned, we, I think we might be phasing out of this practice, but we have a USB. So we mm -hmm. put all these resources yeah. on a Word document, upload that to a USB drive, and send it out to all fully online students. It's almost like a welcome package. Mm -hmm. um, it, there's cards that we include um, in the envelope with a picture of our team on it. Um, and we just stopped doing that this quarter, um, sending out the little envelope with the card and the USB drive with um, resource, links to all these resources um, because I don't think students use those as much. And so we're trying to figure out what, what would be the, you know, what would be applicable to them now. Um, 
part of it is just for them to feel like they have um, part of Shoreline Community College and, for, and we send them to the fully online students who may never step foot on our campus. So if you have ideas or if you're doing anything like that, let us know. Okay, so how long have we been using Smarter Measure? Um, we've launched, we launched it in fall 2015. Uh, we have 2,300 total attempts and so we're going to show you some data um, so it's coming from those attempts. Um, because it's open to the world, not all of those are Shoreline students um, or become Shoreline students. And so <clears throat> the data we're going to look at today, um, it's two thousand, you know, a little over 2,000 of our students um, who began the survey. And like we said, not everybody completes it. So um, a good fair of them don't go through the whole entire survey. 15% uh, who have taken Smarter Measure did before they enrolled at our institution. And like we said, it's funded through e-learning services. Um, students don't pay for it. Okay, so we're going to um, go through some data around um, the, the people who have taken Smarter Measure and what impact that has had. Um, just know that the data is, is still exploratory. We presented at this conference a couple years ago with much smaller numbers and our um, data management people think the numbers are, are bigger, um, big enough now that we can, it's still exploratory, but we can, we, we have some findings that we can share um, uh, in terms of uh, what types of students it helps and when it helps. So we're gonna ask you to get in pairs or threes. I just had to get a little, plug in it. Those are my two boys at my 50th birthday party. <laughs> so get in pairs and we're going to have you talk um, about the data. I'm going to hand it out to you and then um, talk about it, look at it. So there's three things here. My focus Yeah, 
I was actually the room last time. I was like, no, I'm totally sure. Except that you said it's proprietary. If someone was a smarter mentor in the room, I'm not going to be asked. I was so far before. That was good. Because they, I was trying to get them to be a sponsor of this. Right. I can see that was a conversation. Yeah, and I think they would have, except I, I think they sent it to a conference or Jerry or I don't know, and they didn't quite follow up. But. Um, so I didn't think Smarter Mighty was here, but okay. I just wanted to make sure. So, yeah. yeah, so it is proprietary information. Gotcha. Well, you didn't remember when I brought it up, so. <laughs> so, And I'll share it if they're not here, because, yeah. I mean, that's what people want to know. Um, and maybe they would get a better deal than us. Yeah, so we spend 8100 per year, and we get 901 to 1100 assessments. And so that comes out if we, if we got all of the 1101 of these seven per assessment. Excuse me, that word, do you Because I think Lucy and Tom and I talked about this. Okay. Like, here's, here's where I went, which is starting this week, but then but what can we do with it moving forward? Cause yeah, we need to do more. Yeah, yeah. definitely. But yeah. as I was looking at this, as a side note, that other slide that you guys have been using, yeah. I actually like the way we're using it. Do you? Because like, okay. although it's for a first year experience of course, there's some yeah. like, I like the way we're using it where it is open. Like, we're using it a different way than other people are actually using it. Mm. So, hmm. anyway. Okay, are you ready to present? I'm the first slide only. Well, uh, well, I'm one. Okay, so who who looked at GPA? Okay, the back group, I think. So tell us about what what this one is is telling us and what you came to. Yeah. Uh, anyway, but then we really were interested in the all things to face group on the right side. And okay. Thought, oh, how interesting. Even though it's not really supposed to be different, there's some interesting groups there potentially for the smarter measure people to be. Yeah. And so I speculated that maybe that we need to took it and then said, oh, I'm not ready. Let me go take all things. Yeah. Let me avoid a uh, like. Yeah, they could have. And I, I think we've anecdotally heard that and we've talked about that in our yep. in our department Jordan's like should I dissuade people <laughs> from taking online I know it's <laughs> yeah yeah because we do want them to be ready or to be able to get ready to take an online class right so so basically in terms of GPA um, there's no difference in terms of students who took smarter measure or didn't uh, if you're online, all online, took one online class or all face-to-face, -face, generally it's, there's not a difference there. So what about GPA when you break it out by race and ethnicity? Right. Yeah. Uh, a question that I have with this, is this all of your students based on the 
The, these are the people who um, were comparing um, who took smarter measure. Is that so what? all of the students, this doesn't differentiate between the students that took online courses and the ones that took Right. No, not in this one. Okay. Yep. Yep. So I think um, even though the numbers, like you mentioned for black students, we only have 46, um, that uh, there, it, it, there is a difference. And so we're thinking, hey, we really need to reach out to those students. To, this might be a good tool for them to take. Um, and we, that's kind of our next step is, okay, what do we do with that information? You know, and how do we, how do we really leverage this? Um, Right. Yeah, yeah, we'll get into that in a second, a little bit. Okay. Right, I know. I don't know. That's, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, so now we have black students only that we're looking at, and this was this view all over here, I think. Yeah. So tell us about when the, it's their first quarter for black students, what, is there any, any findings in terms of taking smarter measure? I think it's, I think it's really just what we just discussed. I think that um, it was a significant difference between um, both, both online, all online, and also the all face-to-face, we saw some large differences. Again, we did discuss the fact that the end was quite small, small, so it's hard to say at this point. Yep. Um, but it was interesting that the one online there's not much of a difference. Right. I'm wondering why is it because they don't have a, 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 you know, much data in their GPA even to be able to say if it's only their first quarter. I'm not, I'm not really sure like, why. Yeah. Yeah. What does that even mean, the one online? Yeah, I'm not sure what your creation was in that generation. This has been since 2015. Yeah, so we're measuring everybody who has taken Smarter Measure since we launched in fall 2015. And so our numbers, our ends are small, you know. Um, so we need to, we, we, just, we were wondering a couple years ago, are we going to continue paying for Smarter Measure? And um, when we presented at this conference originally, our numbers were much smaller. So our institutional research people said, it looks, you know, promising but we can't draw firm conclusions. So let's keep, keep at it if we have the funding for uh, a longer time to get larger numbers. And I think with these findings, we would say, yeah, I think there are some really beneficial things that um, this assessment is doing and we need to have more students take it. Retention. Retention. <laughs> well, so I think the other question that was uh, <laughs> Right. Like exactly. Them. Yes. And, and like trying to do uh, compare and contrast and yeah, make every African American yeah. student in one quarter take it. Right. Okay. But don't have the essay part and complete <laughs> it and see if there's, you know, like what, where would it pull out? Would it be closer to the 3.5 or would it right. be closer to the, um, you know, 1.5? Right. Yeah. Right, because it is optional. So, right. are the folk, the black students who are taking it, are they already, self yeah, self-selecting? Yeah. How would you? How, how? I know. How are we gonna? How would you do that? How would you implement? Yeah. Okay. How would we implement it, like, if we wanted all black students to take it? You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a problem. I know, like, yeah. I don't know. I think Anthony's point of, like, incorporating it into a course or several courses, you know, like, you don't want them to have to take it two times, but, like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe I we. Mean, I feel like you would be totally racist. I, should just look back through I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody, institutionally, for right. the first quarter. We want to be careful about the stereotype for us. Yeah. 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 Can you, um, like, I know, like, if my university for the same generation between the 70s and 90s, do you know what I mean? Right. Like, please finish it. Oh, 
Well, yeah, so I, I, I personally reach out, so I have a list of all students that I can email them. There's not those that I've done, maybe you can do the ones that you do Oh, I, I can find those. So I don't, there's not an automated system. It's not automated. There's a list of everyone who has not completed it, and then I have all the emails. And it's actually like, exactly, I'll attach it to that. We use um, eval kit for evaluation kit for, um, we administer end of the quarter um, evaluations of faculty for online classes and have built really robust reminders into that that have increased. Um, it, it does, yeah. But Smarter Measured is not, it's more manual. Yeah. yeah. There is an uh, admin dashboard view. I didn't show you that this presentation is more for me to read, but you can get some of the data back in data. Yeah. There was a question. Well, Yeah. So there could be some. Yeah. So like once the fall and stuff. Yeah, there could be some in here that you know the effect may not necessarily be measured. Exactly. Exactly. I agree. I agree. And and we. Um, through the course of having Smarter Measure, like I said, it was a good impetus for us to understand what students needed and to put those things into place. And we're still in that process. So hopefully we'll get better results, you know, the farther we go down the line. Okay, so retention. There's a question for retention. Who did retention? The data people. <laughs> they got the hard one. So tell us about, for degree-seeking students, what did you see? Again, we saw that there were obviously lower numbers of people that did actually take the, the survey. Yeah. But it does at least show promises to you of being able to show improvement. Definitely, I think it needs more people to take it for it. Right. If, if they were going to take this, but very potentially already good with the technology. Yeah, and motivated maybe to, yeah. So, but across the board, no matter if you're a fully online, taking only one online, or even because we do have people who are fully face to face who find the, the survey and take it, it seems like. Well, we're all face to face, even 83 percent, 83 percent. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Say that again. All face to face, that we have. These are, yeah, these are just okay, de degree seeking. Uh, and then, yeah, we're new fully okay, the new fully online ones. Yeah. So these are um, uh, different look at the at retention. These are degree seeking students. And then these are if you're new um, and you're fully online. Okay. This one? The oh, last one. Right oh, okay. That along with the self selection, they have already put in the effort of finishing it so they have skin in the game. So they're probably going to be more likely to be in the game. So getting them to do it, once you get that barrier gone, then it's too great. I don't, and I think our numbers are not just based on people who finished. That someone said that in the audience. I think it's it's based on if they started Smarter Measure. Yeah. So even doing part of it, it seems like it's helpful, which a lot of them only don't finish the whole thing. And then, so this is a, another group that seems like it really does help if you're new to college and you're fully online. Um, it does seem to have an effect in terms of re being retained until the next quarter. <clears throat> okay, and so what do faculty think? So we've surveyed faculty about it. Yeah, we surveyed faculty in the summer quarter of 2018, and uh, we just sent out a survey to those who use it. So here's some. Um, just feedback points uh, to share. But it mainly helps students aware of some of those pitfalls and resources that they might have aware of uh, the potential. So, and I keep forgetting slide 29. Slide 29. And so one faculty member said, I think Smarter Measure makes students more aware of what they need help with. And it also helps me um, to help them if their students are hesitant to ask for help on their own. And I didn't our, um, 
lunch speaker just talk about that too about you know seeking help that's a skill that that um, helps you along in life in a variety of ways um, another faculty member says some students have self-assessed and gone from online to the hybrid format so that's kind of what we were talking about that they do take it and then say wow I'm not ready for an online class some have sought help from Jordan our e-learning advisor and all have benefited from the self-awareness that provides them about their ability to be successful in a college environment so yeah it's it's um, effective for face-to-face -face students too right because it's about a lot of skills that are just about going to college too so some ways that other colleges use smarter measure so uh, smarter measure will put out webinars for best practices of what other colleges are doing so this might answer some of the questions that people have for how do we get students to take smarter measure so madison technical college anyone taking an online course for the first time needs to take smarter measure and so how it originated for them was in the summertime their courses are condensed and they have these fully online four week classes so if you're a first time online learner and you're taking this accelerated course it's probably going to so that's one way. Um, Cali College, um, they are required through their online education, so their online education is So all students are probably do. And at Southern New Hampshire University, they have the most comprehensive uh, way of using it. So they use it in their first year experience course, and each component is one week. So they really go through that. Mm. And then they've also purchased the upgrade. You can also do math and English assessments, uh, added into some of the So they use it through their first year experience course, which is several weeks. And, and yeah, there's some ideas about other colleges use it, so it's open to everyone, that's what we're using it, but we can just kind of basic final students. So we thought maybe we could take a few moments to discuss um, how you think you could incorporate Smarter Measure or something similar into your class or daily work, and what role you could have in supporting an effort like this. So what do you, do you have thoughts? Oh, okay. Okay. Uh-huh. Totally, totally. That's a requirement for every single student? Uh, yeah. Hmm. Okay. What's the course all again? Um, oh, yeah, okay. That's cool. But it's about like digital literacy stuff? Yeah. You learn a little bit about Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Basic, and Yeah. And then you can access the internet, have access to the Yeah. Good. We're we're working on something yeah, we're like that. Something. <laughs> We'd love to hear more. Yeah. Uh, what, what school is it again? Okay. Okay. Good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. It does take like I when I took it, you could see um, in the assessment I took a couple years ago. I don't. I think it took me like thirty minutes or something to take it. And yeah, I have a PhD in English. <laughs> you know, um, so it can take you know thirty to forty-five PhD minutes. Yeah. It's a little bit. It's a forty-five to fifty minutes. Yeah. So if you have it as part of you know like a face-to-face -face event, just think it's going to take a chunk of time for people to do it. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Any other th thoughts? Um, you're in bringing it back to your institutions. Yeah, I, I, I work for the state. I mean, we have a, I work for the e campus center, so we develop fully online programs. We also develop an e campus based students uh, uh, and online courses. And so for the uh, online programs, we have a conduct online learning course, but I can do one kind of course as well. And so, we have sent us an accelerated course to seven weeks, seven modules. And so in the second, the first module we talked about stuff like sciences and so on. In the second module, we start talking about time management. And, and as part of that, we did the last series of session, which is really breaking down more in the study skills. Mm -hmm. It does include some stuff about time management and stuff. But I can see that this could be like really in the first module. It's really good to do this. And just kind of 
assess their readiness and then let's say it's the second model that you follow up more like kind of deeper dive mm-hmm. into those. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if both would be true in that sense. Mm-hmm. You both would be true. They only go to three models. So mm. I don't think it's really quite as deep as it would be just like a type of two. Mm-hmm. Like so it seems much more practical when you ask them about it. Just kind of more like that cognitive mm-hmm. skill. It doesn't have mm-hmm. to be the kind of thing. But the question I have, have you looked at other, when you were looking for a tool to use, mm-hmm. were the other ones, and aside from smarter than that you were also looking at? Yeah, um, it's been <laughs> a few years ago, so I'm trying to remember. Because um, we, we first started out just with like some questions on, you know, on an online form that people would fill out, and you know, like 12 questions or something like that. Um, and I'm trying to remember. You weren't you weren't was around. Thinking. Yeah, <laughs> um, I'm try, I'm trying to think of who are the competitors to it right now, um, other than uh, maybe some open you know, open things that aren't maybe as in depth. Was um, there maybe developed as part of the research? Was it based on like, you know, well validated as a computer based on computer about learning and, and yeah. stuff? They do have a bunch of those resources on their site, so they have a bunch of analysis and uh, mm-hmm. just research is really helpful that they use for the colleges. So they collect and I can't I don't know exactly when you're if it's exactly what you're looking for, but they definitely have a bunch of you know, analysis and case mm-hmm. studies. I know the CEO, he's an interesting guy. I, he just stepped down, I think, from being CEO. We see something else um, at the company because he's looking to, he's young, but he's looking to retire, you know, soon. And I know he teaches online and he takes classes online, um, but I can't, I can't speak to the, I can't remember the research behind it. Yeah, but you could look at their site. Yeah, yeah. Yes? Yeah. I don't Yeah, I think this one I think is the most yeah. There's a lot of back end stuff too, which is probably presentation itself. Yeah. There's actually a lot of cool stuff in the I think they're gonna uh, I um was trying to get them to come to this conference or sponsor it and I think the organizers just didn't follow up with them because I think they would have sponsored um the conference. Um we didn't want to present with them, <laughs> but I think they will be interested in our results. Um, yeah. So, okay. Well, are there any other questions or comments? We it looks like we have like three minutes left. Yes. Right. Right. I don't, we haven't tracked that. Not the services piece, but we can see who's taking it online. That's a good point, but yeah, the services piece, that's, a, that's probably a little trickier, but. Yeah. Like maybe we'd have to survey? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I suppose we'd maybe could, because we do track to see who comes in the advising center and the counseling center. So yeah, I guess we, I suppose we could do that piece, but we do have a diminishing number of problems. It would be interesting to see. It would be. Yeah. Are those GPAs higher? Right. Right. Yep. So the answer is no, but if you. Yeah, did you? Are the, the resources, the articles and stuff, stuff that you've been posted that you could have on the website? Yes. Yeah, we could. Mm-hmm. Yep, good idea. Right. Right. Yeah. And I think we, do you remember how much you can edit the tool itself? Because you can, you can do a little bit of customization, but not a ton. Yeah, there's not a lot. It's pretty, not it's pretty a ton. Rigid, though. Some of the main core like, components you have to do. 